Hey everyone, welcome to Car Review. Today we're going to do a no spoiler review of Wonder Woman 1984. So let's get into it. So, Wonder Woman 1984 or Wonder Woman 2 or whatever you want to call it uh, is out and it's available for us to watch not only in theaters but also uh, in the comfort and privacy of our own homes via HBO Max. And uh, I got to see this movie in a the theater. I know that that is not an available option for everyone. And uh, I think if you can do that, you should do that in a safe and responsible manner because this movie is meant to be seen uh, on the big screen. And I think that the big screen adds to it. However, I totally respect uh, those people that want uh, that, again, that security and that privacy of watching it in their homes. Regardless, though, uh, the movie is good. Is it as good as the first Wonder Woman movie? No, it's not. If the first Wonder Woman is a 10, I would rate 1984 at about uh, an 8, maybe even a 9, uh, depending on uh, how much time goes past and how much time I have to think about this movie. Um, but I just recently saw it, and I really enjoyed it. However, I do want to start with the things that I did not like about the movie. And again, this will be no spoilers. Um, what I did not like about the movie so much was the moments with Themyscira. Uh, Themyscira has very much served as the origin point for Wonder Woman and her Amazonian team from the first movie, and they bring it back for 1984, which I'm fine with. However, I think that the way that they executed it here in this movie and the way that they used it in the movie is not fine. I'll even go as far to say as they were unnecessary additions. Again, I won't spoil those scenes, I won't spoil um, anything about the movie or anything like that, but I think that their addition um, is something that could have been left on the cutting room floor. Um, again, they they are very fun and they're very uh, interesting to look at and they're cool, but I think that that's something that could have been left behind. I do understand why they did it. You know, when you watch the movie, you will too. And also from a logistical standpoint, you made this entire nation with these great structures and this culture and these these amazing warriors. You're going to want to use that. You're going to want to have that tool in your toolkit. But again, having it be set so many years after the first one, I think it was an unnecessary addition. And also, again, no spoilers, but the the information that they present to you uh, on Themyscira and about Themyscira does contradict some of the stuff that we know about the island that we learned about in the first movie. And if it doesn't outright contradict it, it gets really close and it kind of, the movie just kind of expects you to accept that and move on. Again, it's not, it's not like saying the island was hidden and actually no, it wasn't. It, there's just these little points, these little chronological points that might not connect completely again. Um, you know, maybe they do, and maybe I'm just missing a few steps, but from the first time I watched the movie, I thought, haven't we already seen this? I thought we already talked about this. Now this is kind of different. So some of the stuff on Themyscira, I thought, um, wasn't, it didn't serve an overall great purpose. And for that reason, I think it could be left alone. The entire movie as a whole though, um, um, it, it really does work, but continuing into what I did not like before we get to what I did like. Um, the, the overall, the point of where which this movie falls in terms of timeline is an issue for me. Again, this is not, I'm not saying that the 1984 setting is its issue. I'm not saying that that time jump in the story is the issue. I'm saying this movie comes after Wonder Woman, but before Justice League. And so we know where she started, we know where she gets to, and now it needs to act as a bridge between those those movies, between those story points. And it does that, however, this movie has a huge problem of telling, not showing. You get told that a lot of stuff has happened to Wonder Woman. You get told a lot of stuff that has happened around Wonder Woman, but you don't necessarily get to always see that stuff. And when you do get to see it, it's, again, very quick, very, you're moving at a breakneck pace, and the movie just says, you know, kind of go with it. It's, it's, it's Wonder Woman, and it very much lends its comic book roots to you. It, it pretty much asks you to 
suspend disbelief a little bit and say, just go with it. Which again, this is a superhero movie. And so you're already suspending disbelief a little bit when the movie just presents you with info and then says, and we're, we're, we're past that and we're moving on. Again, you can roll with it. You can pick up the pieces. Um, however, you have for the, for the information it presents you, you do have to be ready and on point to absorb this info. Otherwise you will be lost or confused. And so again, where, what this movie does in the timeline, it does it in is, is a little out of place. However, it it's drops in a bucket compared to an overall great movie with that now let's get into what i did like the actual timeline setting not where it falls in the dc eu or whatever we're calling it now but the actual 1980 setting awesome i think that they nailed that perfectly and from the first introduction to that world it's so colorful it's bright it sounds great looks great you feel like you want to live there and for uh the older viewers of this movie uh they will have lived it and i have no doubt that when my parents see the movie they will know exactly what these landmarks mean and what these styles of clothes represent to them i think it's a great echoing sentiment uh to that and i think they perfectly captured that uh that part of the movie i think that their theme is on point for someone born outside of the 80s it made me want to go back like if i had a time machine it made me want to go back to the 80s and like live there for a bit i think that's that's super great they really nailed that in terms of set design and aesthetic what i also like is i love the supporting cast kristen wig uh pedro pascal and chris pine completely steal the show this is a wonder woman movie gal gadot is the star she is wonder woman however uh kristen wig is cheetah Chris Pine as Steve Trevor and Pedro Pascal as Max Lord. They are such great additions to this, this mythos, this, this overall narrative for Wonder Woman. And I love them. I want more with them. I think that they not only interact great off of each other, but they also interact greatly off of Wonder Woman. And they act greatly when you have their solo character moments. And all of this is clicking in a great way that just kind of harmonizes in this great engine. You know, I think if Wonder Woman, if Gal Gadot is driving the car, um, they, these other characters are her, are her wheels. And you know, that, you know, there's only three, three out of four for a car, but you get what I'm saying. Um, they really help move the, the film along and I want more time with them. I also think that, that the action is great and um, what I was really worried about with this movie is the fact that they bring back Steve Trevor again. That's not a spoiler. That's in the trailer. That's front and center. I was really worried about that. And I won't get into how they do that because, again, no spoilers. Um, but the way they did it, I loved it. Uh, the way they did it completely clicked with me and made sense. It felt honest to the character. It felt honest to uh, how we last saw the character in, in the original Wonder Woman. It does not negate who he is or who he was and it does not negate uh the what wonder woman felt at the end of her first movie if anything i think the return of him adds to that overall tension and that overall emotional connection because you will find out in the movie what this means for both of them and how this plays out for them and i think that's great i think that was a really risky gamble but Again, Patty Jenkins returning as director, she completely took command and she very much uh, uh, knew how to do this. And I'm very glad that she did it the way that she did. Um, and yeah, I I really enjoyed Wonder Woman 1984. Is it as great as, that, as the first movie? No, it's not. Um, and there are issues, like I said, with unnecessary uh, fluff to the story. I'll even go as far as to say that the stuff I mentioned before is fluff. And so while the story isn't as tight as the first movie, it is really, really great. And I'm going to say it's great. I, I left the theater wanting more. I want to see it again. And it made me excited for, excuse me, for a third film. And I really hope that Patty Jenkins um, is the director who sticks around for the third film because the groundwork 
that she laid for future Wonder Woman stories is is awesome. And what she did in this movie not only gets you excited about um, Wonder Woman again, but also for her future well beyond a Wonder Woman 3 or whatever that looks like. And it really is a shame that this movie isn't getting the the legs it deserves. Again, we're in a pandemic. I completely get that. Um, you know, movies are are an afterthought compared to one's health. But this movie, if this had dropped when it was supposed to in the summer with no pandemic, I think this would have been a billion dollar film. And I really believe that even though it does suffer a little bit overall in its presentation compared to the first film, um, it is fun. It's exciting. It's, it's emotional. It's, it's huge in scale. And it's, and no matter if you see it on a big screen or a small screen, it's what we need right now. And I'm very happy that um, the movie that we get to see is the movie that we get to see. I'm glad that they um, that they didn't alter it um, in any way. I'm glad that they presented it in the way that they did. I'm glad that we got it now. Um, you know, I could they have held on to it to 2021, sure, um, but it. It very much is an idol of hope, just as how Wonder Woman herself should be, and and I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I I think the movie's great, and and I really want to see more. We need more Wonder Woman in our lives, and I think that Wonder Woman 1984 is a great second chapter for a great character. So yeah, that's my review of Wonder Woman 1984. If you like this video, comment, share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Peace.